Hi, I'm Mix Miles and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a uh, an auger post hole driller that someone's bought in. Uh, this belongs to the same guy that owns the Enhale. Um, it looked brand new, or pretty much brand new, uh, but I oh, one or two problems already with it. I don't know if it runs or if it doesn't run. I'm not 100% certain. I think he said he has had it running, but um, it's got a broken fuel cap that I can see. It runs on 25 to 1, brand new enough, brand new machine too. So that's what we're going to put in it. Um, I would normally run out of fault with one with modern day oils, but it says 25 to 1, so that's what we're going to do. And uh, try and get this machine up and running for these guys. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll run. As I say, it's done no work at all, so hopefully it should be a quick little fix, but I don't know what's up with it, so we should soon find out. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mouse and Mouse Man, hit your subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's have a look at this auger post hole driller and try and get that to run if we can. Right, so it's out here. Here it is. Little tiny um, post hole auger driller. Um, but straight off the bat, um, I'm noticing the fuel cap is actually broken. So that could be a thing. Now, I don't know if I've got a fuel cap to fit that. We'll have to find something in the old, in the old um, shed. Uh, but it will need to be vented uh, is the only thing. I could try and plastic weld it. It does seem to be only, maybe only the outside of it that's actually broken. I don't quite know. Can't really see. Oh no, I can just saw just saw daylight through it. Yeah, no, that's broken. So, got to look at that. There's no point even trying to start it um, because um, until I can figure out the fuel lines, I think the fuel lines might be knackered. He said it was leaking from the grommet as well, or something. There is what he said to me. Um, let's put it up on the bench and just check the fuel lines for condition first. I think that's one of the best things we can do check that grommet and then we'll go from there. I might actually have a tank off so I can get have a look inside the, inside the tank so what's going on and then we'll go from there. Right so here it is. Uh, I need to find a fuel cap that's one thing I do need to do uh, but the first thing I want to do we said it's leaking out the grommet that's where you said it was leaking from and these fuel lines do feel quite quite sort of um, hard so I'm going to pop the grommet is the first thing I'm going to do and then that way I can then see what's actually going on with this Nine times out of ten. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, the grommet's actually got a bit of a deterioration on it. The fuel filter's just fallen off in my hands. Let's pull that grommet out. Oh. And the grommet is deteriorated on the actual seal itself, so I've got some spare grommets for that. Uh, well, I think we'll go for new fuel lines anyway. That's what we'll definitely do. Um I'll grab that 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 fuel um, filter out of there. See what that looks like as well. Whilst we're here, there's a bit of fuel in here. There's another. What's that there? Something else in here. Don't know quite what that is. We need to fish that out. Whatever that is there. There's something there. I just dropped down. Whatever that was. There it is. What's that? What is that? There's something in this tank. So there's a fuel filter. But I saw something else. Oh, a bit difficult to manhandle this one. There's definitely something inside that tank. There. Let me try and fish it out. I know, I know I'm off camera, but I can just, just, I'll just caught sight of it. So let me try and fish that out, whatever that is. Uh -huh. okay. So that is the actual cap um, retaining clip for the cap itself. There it goes. Okay, so that's the actual clip for the uh, for a, for a cap. Oh. 
These are not the easiest things to work on because no, no matter which way you go, you can't sort of stand them up. Um, so the fuel hose, a uh, fuel fuel filter is actually blocked. You can see it is. Look, look how blocked that is. Look, see that? It's all gunk on there. So that's uh, that needs renewing. Uh, I need a new grommet. New fuel hoses will go for. And a new fuel tap, uh, ta uh, cap. We'll go for that first, see how we get on. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a cap for that. If I haven't got them in my box of, be or box of bits, we're going to be a bit stuck here because uh, I don't even know what make it is. It looks like a Parker or something along that line is what I would say. But uh, hey-ho, we don't know. So let's try and find out what size grommet that is. I've got some spare grommets here. Hopefully it's either an 18 or 22 would be uh, preferable. Let's take this fuel line off. Oh, let's have a little look see. Yeah, that's mullered. I would like to fit that in there if I can. That'd be lush. Get that to go in. I might have to take the tank off people to get this. And I've got one or two different types of grommets. But that would be the one I'd like to fit on. If I can get that to go in. Let me try, I've got some more down here. Let me try and find the other ones. So Maybe we slightly smaller. These are about a 28, I think. Uh, grommets, grommets, where are you? I had half a ton down here. I know I did. Uh, that ain't them. Bear with here. I've got a couple of grommets here. What's that? That's an old grommet. That's a new one. I know I did. I know I did because I bought them. There we are. All right, I've got some new grommets here. These look pretty big. Yeah, no, they're not going to do it. Okay. Let's see what else I've got in my box of many things. On a slightly smaller grommet if I've got it. That's the same size. So I've got all, all different sizes in here. All different sizes and bits and pieces. Got one actually come off of that. It's a three hole tube. It's no good. It'll be two hole. Three hole. What's that one? That's a two. And that's slightly. That could do it and all. Quite like those two. So what I might do is take the tank off. I think that'd be easier just for me to get at. Because um, I'm trying to fit this with a amount of space that I've got is not going to be an easy thing, I don't think. Oh, I was saying that, that's gone pretty well already. No, I'm going to take the tank off. So to take the tank off is one bolt at the back here. I'll remove the pull cord assembly. <laughs> you can't work, I can't move it. Uh, one bolt at the back here as well. They're all Allen bolts and screw and Phillips. So I think we'll go for that first. So let's remove the pull cord assembly. That'll expose some of it. And the pull cord comes out towards the uh, carburetor just for future reference. Because even I have to refer back to video sometimes. Okay. So pull cord comes off. That's good, a little, mount, little mounting bracket there. And then I've got one Allen bolt here and one Allen bolt down in here somewhere. And that should be is all is required to remove, remove this. That's a good guess for size. Now it also has a gearbox on here as well. Um, I'm not sure what, what uh, oil to put in there yet, or to check it, but if anyone knows what oil goes into there, just leave it in the comment section for me. I'll have to look it up at some point. But it's going to be very hard to do when you don't actually know uh, what make and model it is. So now, by undoing this bolt here, that should give me the tank. I hope. A bit of a bit of a pickle to work on. It was a bit of a tank flash as well, but we will put a new fuel filter on it, so that'll help. All right, so there's a tank. Let's have a little look in there. There's a bit of gunk in there, not a lot, but there's a bit of gunk at the top end here. I notice. See, 
that's what I want to get out. But uh, let's get the new grommet in place first. Let's bring you guys down just a touch. Okay, so now we're back on the bench and uh, hopefully I've got a grommet to fit this. Uh, we've got slightly one, slightly one, that's, well, that, that's when I come off of it, okay. I've got these two. Now I've got quite a thick neck on there to get past and I think that's gonna be the better choice because it's got a slightly thicker neck on there. So that's the idea, to, is to force this one into place. It should go, over the fault. It's gonna be just literally brute force to squeeze that in. Once you get it sort of half in, you can then just manipulate the last bit in. But it's so much easier to do it when it's not on the actual machine. Get in there. That last bit just don't want to go. There it goes, I think that's going. I thought we went then. Now you can use a flat-headed driver, but the problem is using a flat-headed driver is you can damage the skirt of the um, the grommet. And that's not something I really want to do. So if you're using a flat-headed driver, you have to go a bit careful. All right, that's gone. All right, that's in place. So that will stop that issue in future from leaking out of there, which is what you said it was doing. Uh, I'll give a tank a quick swill with some fresh fuel just to clean the tank out because there's all sorts of dirt and debris in there um, and that won't help the um, the new fuel filter we're going to put in there so a bit of fresh fuel goes in not a lot just a smidge I'm just going to run that through just to loosen up any barnacles we've got going on in there and I'll find a jug or utensil just to pour that in here's a jug That'll do. Let's see what goodies we get. What's that floating? There's something else in there floating about. I can hear it. Did that come out, whatever that was. Let's pull that back in again. Just a bit. There's still bits of dirt in there. What do we get in there then? There are some bits in there. Whatever that is. God knows. I don't know, I don't, I've got no idea what that is. But uh, hey ho, and there's something else in there too, just a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, it's just bad gas and stuff, I think. Anyway, it's no good at being in there. So that can now come out, and I'll put some new fuel lines in now um, to make sure that we're, uh, we're okay. So let's get my box of many things up. Uh, what have we got on the carby? Quite a good size um, fuel inlet. I think that'll probably do it, to be fair. If I can get that one to go onto there, yeah, that'd be all right. How does that fit into that old air, Mick? Yeah, it's lush. Okay. Right, a uh, pair of snippers. So this is going to be the fuel inlet pipe. So I'll make that into a V, or into a point, rather. Like that. And then push that through all the way. A pair of long nose pliers just to help it out. Once you get it moving, it'll be away. It's a tight old fit, that is. Oh, so it's tapered at the end, that's why. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna try and force this, um, this pipe in. Now, if you can't get it in, you have to just cut it off a bit more, about half a pipe like so, just so you can actually physically get the pipe in and then you can grab it the other side with a pair of forceps just to run it through. It just takes a little bit of a, let's go in there. Okay, so run that all the way through, drop your, 
your, your line down because you want to try and see where that actually is. So I'll put enough line in there and then try and fish that out. Give it a twist, there it goes, right there it is there. And I can then bring that back up. There it is. We can then cut that off level. Grab a new fuel filter. I've got any spare. I mean, you want a weighted one, get me out. Running a bit low on those. Need to pick some more two stroke filters and bits and pieces up. So a brand new uh, fuel filter. What, what came off of it? A little tiny thing like that, a little screen one. I think that's actually what, what it deteriorated. We're going to try and force this onto here. This is, this is why I struggle with these things. These are a pain in the, in the proverbial. Because you're trying to use the same size um, fuel diameter lead pipe to go through the grommet. It's got to go through the neck on this uh, filter as well. But they, they can take a while, but sometimes a bit of hot water helps. But also it can hinder you because um, it makes it, it so the pipe actually bends. But once you get it half sorted, half on, you'll find it goes. Oh, but it can be a bit of a pickle if not a slightly wider diameter uh, inside will, will help you. Once you get it sort of half sorted like that, look like it's sort of wanting to go then, just back it off a touch. I'm gonna fight this for about an hour. You won't see if I don't. I might come back to you. Got it half sorted, half on, but then it just, just comes back off again. So yeah, let me come back to you. I'll get it on there, two seconds. Hallelujah, finally got it on there. Um, so now what you want to do is just roughly measure, you know, because you want this to sit ideally right at the bottom of a tank about there. So that wants to come back a touch, maybe a bit more. But yeah, about there. So we can now push that back in all the way and if you look at the bottom of the tank you can see it's just sat here right at the very very base of it just there so that's roughly where you want I'm just going to pull it in a touch you want it to sit right at the very very bottom of that tank that's perfect so we're happy with that um, and then i've got enough enough pipe work here to come up onto the carby it hasn't got a lot of distance to travel so i'm going to cut that about there okay and what i'm going to do i'm going to cut uh, one end or both ends of these uh, into a point so that I know that one is a return and I know that the other, where it's not been cut, is my main feed. Okay, that can then go into there all the way in and just you want that hanging in at about two inches. Okay, so we now know that this is my um, my return and this is my main feed. Okay, right, with the grommet now done, I can now put the tank back onto the machine. So it's just a reverse, it's just for two bolts here and here that um, bolt to the back of a tank and then the uh, pull cork then go back on and then we can try and uh, manipulate these pipes onto the carburetor. Okay, so pull cork is now back on where it should be and tanks now. I want to try and fit this um, these fuel leads. So we've got, always remember your, your, your wider pipe on your carby, your wider one. Let me try and bring it around a touch, you guys can see. This is not the easiest machine to, to, to film, I tell you. Um, your wider pipe just here um, that's your inlet and remember we we clamped it here we cut it here so we knew that, that as a return so the return can go out of the way for now um, I'm going to bring the inlet one in and I want to cut that just above uh, the mark which is going to be roughly I know my hands are in the way I know we are about there right it's going to cut that there like so I'm going to get along those pliers which are going to be cleaned because we don't want to have no, no um, dirt on the inside of the fuel lines and we're going to grab hold of that fuel line. I'm going to just lock it back, and then we're just going to pop it onto the uh, the carb. This is not so hard this way because uh, you're um, you've got a fixed thing to work against. It's when you're doing the filters is a, a bit of a pickle. And just remember the 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 smaller the the inside diameter the easier it is to put the pipe on. But when you've got a, sl a slightly smaller inside down to the pipes are not weak, but a little bit trickier to put on. Uh, that's on. 
we like that. And then I'm gonna do the same for my return. I'm gonna mark it about there, and that's where we're gonna cut that. <clears throat> and then the return pipe, that's even a bit longer still. Can just push it in to be fair. And then return pipe goes onto there. Now the reason I'm changing these pipes is because the pipes that have come with the machine are just your cheap, your cheap mass reproduction ones, and they don't last. By well, putting proper fuel pipes on, should last a while. Right, so that is now done. I have found a fuel cap for it, um, but I'm not sure that's going to work yet. But um, we just have to wait and see. It does screw down, but I don't know if that's going to vent vent enough. If it doesn't vent, what I could do is just drill a very, very tiny, tiny hole in there just so the tank does vent, but we should see how we get on first. So um, I'm now going to um, fill it up with petrol and give it a run. I'm going to just check this gearbox, just undo that nut on the gearbox just to make sure there is oil in there before I do anything. I don't want to run this machine up without having any oil in it. Um, I don't know if these guys picked this up brand new, if they've had it second hand, I have absolutely no idea at all, but we should figure it out as we go along. And then uh, hopefully I'll meet you outside in a, in a tick, guys, and then um, we'll go for a fire up, see what it does do. Hopefully we might have cured it. Um, it doesn't look like it's um, it's in um, massive bad condition. So we should see, right, so meet you outside two ticks. Once I mixed up some petrol, because it says on here somewhere, I have seen it um, 25 to one. So let me get some mixed up and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okie bidokie. Right, there is all in the gearbox. So, I did have a problem with it not priming. I've got a feeling that cap's not gonna be good enough for it, but we shall see. They said it ran beforehand, but there's no, there's just no telling, you know. Um, so, what's on? Uh, it says here, stop this that way. So that's on. Let's stop, that's on, all right, okay, do that, do that, all right. Okay, all right, all right. So a bit of choke, uh, choke on. I don't think this is a, Literally go off at a flying start with me into the ground. Straight away, on here, it says, choke on, down. What? Uh, I turn it to off choke, I've got a feeling that's choke on. Right, so I turn the choke off now. So it says, let me show you, I'm not making this up. All right, see, choke off, off, on. So that's choke on, right? That's choke off. Nothing. Turn the choke on, which I think is off. Now, if that choke was on, it would run. So the first one I want to do is check that, see what that's doing. Uh, one Phillips screwdriver will put that to bed. So I'm not sure that's right. I think that's back to front or front to back. Uh, Phillips screwdriver. All I want to do is just double check what that choke's actually doing. Or is it running on choke only? I don't think it is. It doesn't sound like it is, but I might be wrong. And I have been proven to be wrong before. You can't put the airbox on the wrong way around. Alright, take your head off. Take your head out. Alright, so choke on is actually choke off. Right, I'm not being silly, I'll show you. Alright, right, so this airbox will only go on one way, that way there, right? It's got to go on like so. That goes over top of that, right? Sits on there like that, okay? So that says choke off, 
choke on. So off is up. Look, that's choke on, choke off. There's a throat to the carb, so choke, it's ran the wrong way. It's actually ran the wrong way, people. That's choke off, which on the box, on here, is choke on. Oh, it can't, it can't go that way. That wouldn't fit. Oh my lord. They can't even get on and off right. Well, there you go. That's a thing, I suppose. So, on is on, off is off, but in reverse. And that wind you up. Now, I had a similar machine to that a couple of years ago. It had exactly the same. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this machine is I'm going to run it again. But this time, I'm very simply going to try and unscrew the fuel cap to see if that improves the running of the machine because the other fuel cap had a vented cap on it okay um, and this one doesn't because obviously it's, I haven't got a, an original cap for it but I would like to just test to see if um, we can at least get to run half sensible with uh, with it the way it is. So sometimes just by releasing the pressure on the fuel on the fuel cap will determine whether or not uh, the, the, the revs are running right, yeah? <clears throat> so, let's bring it back up here again. So choke, choke on is actually off, all right? Just so we know. So let's drive it up then. Happy puppy. Although it's a fuel cap doing it, it, could, it is running a little bit low on fuel to be fair. It is quite a big fuel tank on here. It could be that. It's priming lovely. It's a, it's a cheap machine, but uh, I should fill the tank up a bit more and then give it a good run, try and drill a few holes with it and see how we get on with that. But um, I might try and give it a bit of a tune as well, uh, see if I can't just pick the revs up just a touch and try and just uh, do a bit of um, fuel mixture because it is actually a fuel mixer screw on here as well. So, But apart from that, it wasn't running. It is now. Right, I have just done a trial um, post hole. 
I had to put some safety boots on, goggles, glasses, you know, you know, hard hat and what have you. Um, so there you go, I had done a hole and it worked no problem at all. It worked, seems to work better under load. Uh, so that's a good thing. So I best just uh, cover that back up. I was nano, nano full in the hole. Oh, maybe I uncovered them. Oh, no, no, no. Let me remove that. That would be unfair. So, um, so that does work. I'm happy with it. I just was expecting a bit more from it, I suppose. Uh, but it is a cheap machine, so... What more do you want from a cheap Chinese machine? Um, it all runs, does what it should do. Uh, but just remember, choke on is choke off, and choke off is choke on. Okay, so that's that little um, post hole auger drilling machine now all up and running. Um, it runs okay uh, for what it is. Um, I did test it, as I say, in the garden, and it all done exactly as it should do, so the bloke should be happy with that. Um, this is not a very high quality piece of machine, so therefore don't expect a lot from it, especially if you're trying to use it commercially. This is a home user piece of kit only. Um, not designed to be doing 20, 30 post holes a day <coughs> and all that sort of stuff, but hey-ho, it's probably what the guy could afford, so that's what he's gonna use. Um, but if you found this video um, interesting or very helpful, then leave a um, thumbs up, hit the old subscribe button, hit the old bell, and uh, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon, but until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.